Hey everybody, Jeff here, and today we're going over the absolutely insane drug addict here at Rainbow Six Siege, Bandit. So before we get into the drugs, or I mean the uh, video, so I want to say that I absolutely love making these lore videos for our favorite operators here at Rainbow Six Siege. And I want you all to learn about them too, because I think it's so interesting knowing all the information. For me, it kind of makes the gunfights more personal because I feel a stronger connection to the characters. So if you could all do me a favor and help this video out with the YouTube algorithm. So the way the YouTube algorithm works is it goes off of of like watch time click through rate and then the likes and comments for the first hour and the first 24 hours of a YouTube videos life cycle so if you guys can all help this video out I really appreciate if you guys like finish the video out leave a like and comment and all that just to really boost up the video and the YouTube algorithm so it shows up on like recommended pages and stuff like that just so that more people can get exposed to these cool operator lore videos so that they feel more attached to the characters just like I do so I'm asking you all in the name of Bandit to chug that like button and to snort that comment section. God, that was lame. Well, I'm just gonna keep it anyways, why not? Just, just freaking like the video. Now with all that out of the way, let's start with the place of the drug bus, or I mean the birth of Bandit. Now Bandit's real name is Dominic Brunsmeyer, and he was born on August 13th, 1974, making him 45 years old as of today. Now our favorite little druggie was born into family with his twin brother, where his dad is a renowned officer for the Berlin police force. So Bandit and his brother would hear like leftover landmines being set off accidentally or on purpose all throughout the day, because they lived so close to the Berlin Wall. Now, I bet it's no surprise that Dominic was a little hooligan and his twin brother that he loved so much. Now, he has stated that him and his brother would routinely piss the patrol officers off with pranks, but never really went into detail on what the pranks were. Do you wanna be featured in the next video? Then write a super duper funny comment in the comment section, and whichever one makes me chuckle the most, that comment will be shown in the next video, and we're gonna keep that little cycle going. Every Operator Lore video, write a super funny comment in the comment section, and, uh, could get a chance to be featured in the next video. So once the old bandito got older, his father routinely pushed for him to join the police force just as he did. Now with enough persuasion, he finally committed to the force and on the day after their 18th birthday, Bandit and his brother Cedric joined the BGS. Okay, so I've gotten a couple complaints about how my pronunciation in these types of videos for like words like the Bundes shuts. Like that's, I mean, that's, that's what the BGS stands for. Now like, how do you expect me to pronounce that? Like, like that's just a bunch of letters thrown together. The buttons rents. Like, what? I mean, I, I can't. I suck. So Bandit's first year in the job was uh, not very fun at all, to say the least. He was stationed for Border Patrol and spent most of his days learning how to take orders and filing paperwork. Now he later became a patrolman where he vastly excelled in the crisis management and has taken an eye to supervising officers. He later transferred to an aviation branch where he lasted long enough to obtain his license to pilot helicopters. What? That's so cool. Our little bandit can snort all the drugs he wants and pilot helicopters? Man, I want to be like him. Now, knowing that little nugget of information, I wonder if Ben is the one piloting the helicopter that drops off Thatcher at the end of the MVP animation if you have his elite skin. Now, I'm sure that that's probably not him, but if you think hard enough and use enough imagination, I'm sure you could picture Bandit's cute little face smiling as he's dropping off his boy Thatcher to the MVP animation. But unfortunately, Bandit had to be pulled from the aviation division due to him being just too damn good at his adaptability and border surveillance that he was moved to the GSG-9 to become an undercover specialist. Now this is where Bandit's life gets very, very interesting. Now Bandit's first notable mission was to go undercover for the Red Army faction or the RAF. Now I can only imagine what it's like to create a new identity live by it day in and day out without fail to accomplish a mission. Sounds like something I would not be able to accomplish, so that's why I should probably stick towards like paramedic stuff and being like a really little YouTuber. I'll just never be as cool as Bandit. Now the RAF were some bad mofos that reigned in parts of Germany from 1970 to 1998, with some reports that there are still some RAF members to this day. The RAF took place in many, many bombings, kidnappings, assassinations, bank robberies, 
served along with shootouts with the police force for almost three decades. Now, with no real ability to stop this massive following of criminals, the GSG-9 test banded to go undercover and infiltrate the RAF's ranks to identify some key components to the massive faction. Having to change his whole identity and persona, Bandit successfully gained their trust and secrets. Although I can't find any clear lore facts about what Bandit did while he was part of RAF, I can assume that he had to take place to witness horrible events to further gain the trust of this extremist faction. After some time after the RAF, Bandit was tasked by the GSG-9 in a more severe and demanding conflict, the famous Hanover chapter of the Hells Angels. So this chapter of Bandit's life is actually the inspiration for his elite skin that Ubisoft created. Now while I talk about Bandit being a part of the Hells Angels, I'm going to show you all some cool concept art pieces Ubi made to develop his elite skin. The elite skin named Axel 13 shows off Bandit rocking a very rough biker, clearly part of a gang. The look is what gives Bandit the true ability to blend in with the other Hells Angels members to gather information and help with conducting arrest of vital members. Now if you look close enough you can see a massive scar going from the right side of his shaven head all the way to the back. Now this is actually a self-inflicted wound with a knife to further his disguise and fool the members of the Hells Angels into believing that he had a rough past along with the various tattoos across his entire body. Now can we just take a step back and just imagine what it would be like to take a knife and just slice your scalp away just to go undercover in a mission. Like the amount of dedication this man gives to his just true persona that he wants to be it's just crazy. Now the Hanover chapter of the Hells Angels were a group of Hells Angels gang that were stationed in Germany. Now just to show you guys the true nature of the Hells Angels, let me just name off like a few of the crimes that their members have committed. Racketeering, drug trafficking, assault, extortion, money laundering, murder, loan sharking, prostitution, human trafficking, contract killing, and the trafficking of stolen goods, just to name a few. Now the leaders of Hell's Angels have time and time again stated that they were only a group of motorcycle enthusiasts who have joined to ride motorcycles together and to organize events like road trips, fundraisers, parties, and motorcycle rallies. And they say that the crimes that are committed are at the discretion of the particular people that they are often accused of, and not the Hell's Angels organization as a whole. Well, I'm no detective, but like, I did a solid 10 seconds of researching and uh, they, they did it. Like, uh, th there is just so much evidence of the amount of stuff that they did that like how can you like say that you had no idea that your members were doing this or like what like come on you guys did it like that's that's some bullshit oh well so bandit never really told anyone about what he did as a hell's angel but he did disclose to harry director of team rainbow during his interview process some information on what it took to be undercover like that so during one of the meetings with harry bandit mustered up the courage to tell him that some of the troubling times of being undercover like that he tells them that you start to lose the real you and it's very difficult to truly remember what you were and what your personality was before you took on the new identity. Now during your sleep the question of who are you would frequently emerge. Now before he can let the thoughts of who he was before the mission further he had to stop them for the fear of losing his character and getting caught by the other ruthless members was too much to bear. Now he tells us in his operator lore video that he had to deal drugs, kill, and basically just be a bad person and it promoted him to a new job which is team rainbow now in the video it sounds like he really doesn't care and he kind of puts on that tough guy persona of i did some bad stuff and i really don't care but if you really dive into his lore and his bio and like other pieces of lore across the internet you can see that he really does have some like inner demons and he really regrets a lot of stuff that he did like the repeated traumas and the guilt that he went through just eats at him so harry believes that it's like beneficial for him to socialize with like really calm personality members of team rainbow like twitch castle and blitz those three are actually known to be like really chill and uh think with a clear mind and that could really help squish some of like bandit's inner demons now bandit is like a true master of the art of deception 
But sorry, Bandit. Uh, I got someone else who is actually the true master of deception, and it's uh, it's Chancellor Palpatine. I don't know if any of you guys are Star Wars fans, but uh, Chancellor Palpatine or Emperor Palpatine deceived the entire galaxy in Star Wars for a number of years, including the Jedi Council, and was playing the identity of a just a wee little old man that he was just a senator and a chancellor, and he didn't really have anything going for him. But in all reality, he was arguably like one of the most powerful Sith Lords of all time. So Bandit, sorry bro, maybe next time you'll get the trophy for most deceptive character, but uh, I honestly think that one goes to Palpatine. So during his time undercover, he actually started developing the prototype for his gadget, the Crude Electrical Device, or the CED-1 for short. So flash forward to today while he's a member of Team Rainbow, we'll see that in the bio that his gadget was actually evaluated by Pulse, another member of Team Rainbow. And I was caught off guard at first because normally it's Mira that does the gadget evaluation. But anyways, the evaluation went really, really well and Pulse even enjoyed his gadget and even said that it was really fun running a series of mods to maximize his true capability. Abilities. Pulse says that Bandit is like a grease monkey and has a stubborn personality and he rocks with the mentation of if it ain't broke then don't fix it. But if I were Bandit, I would like find a way to get the Bandit batteries like like hooked up on a hatch or something. Like don't you think that'd be kind of epic? Like if Bandit truly wanted to be like next level, all he would need is like, I, am I, am I thinking, overthinking this? But like all he would need is like just a roll of duct tape. Like, like put the battery up there and then take take your duct tape and just whoop, whoop, and maybe another one down here and then like you're good like i think that'll work right also in the valuation pulse says that he makes a little note and he's joking around that uh bandit wore the lab coat and says bandit is such a grease monkey he actually spilled he has no idea what the hell he spilled on his jacket but that was actually Pulse's lab coat that Bandit wore. And uh, he was like, well, I don't know what the hell this is, so I'm just going to incinerate it. That's right, Pulse is going to incinerate his lab coat, not just throw it out, literally burn it to the ground because he just, uh, I don't know why. Well, that's all I got for you guys this time. Let me know what you thought of the video. Did you like how Bandit was like an undercover genius? And did you think it was interesting how in depth he had to be to actually go undercover? Like he took a knife and sliced his head. Like that is some dedication. Let me know by doing a comment down below. Also, you could leave a suggestion of what other operator you'd like to see in a video. I've already done Thatcher, Ash, Doc, Tachanka, and now Bandit. So those are five operators already done. So if you like today's video, then leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And follow me on Insta at SirJet because I post like two to three times a day, usually like memes or clips or like when I'm going live on Twitch. Oh, hey, speaking of Twitch, um, yeah, you should follow me over there too to catch me on stream, watch me like really mad and like really awkward and upset sometimes and sometimes i do good sometimes i play really well now with all that being said jeppy out to chugs that was like so so i'm asking all of you in the name of band to chug those like